What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next question in the exponential functions unit test. This is a pretty cool one. A student sent it to me from one of their tests and it's a thinking question. It's not gonna be too long, but it's a little tricky to get the answer. Like a lot of these thinking questions are. Some of them, some of them can be long, but a lot of them, they're very short, but then just kinda getting the right answer, showing the right answer can be difficult. And what we have to do here is we're given this weird looking function, which is actually an exponential function, believe it or not. And we have to show that this exponential function is going to be modeling a DK scenario, meaning that the exponential function is going to be decreasing. So we're going to have to algebraically show this somehow. Now, before we do that, I want to do a quick review that if you have a parent function b to the power of x like this, if this base is between 0 and 1, then we know that it's a decaying function or a decreasing function. Basically, the exponential function is going to look like this, right? So if you have like 1 half to the power of x or 1 over 3 to the power of x or 4 over 5 to the power of x, if b is between 0 and 1, the function is going to be decreasing. Or in like a word problem, it's going to represent a decaying scenario. Okay. Another thing I want to mention is that you've got to make sure that this uh, x is not going to be negative. Okay. So what I'm writing over here, these two different scenarios are only for when you have a positive x exponent. Because if it was negative, like if you had... 1 over 2 to the power of negative x, that would be the same as 2 over 1 to the power of positive x, which is just 2 to the power of x, which is actually a growth function. Okay, so what I'm writing here, you got to make sure that that uh, exponent is uh, positive, right? Because if it's negative, it means that we're going to basically take a decaying function and then reflect it in the y-axis and it's going to become a growth function. Okay, so it basically has to be a positive x, and we're going to have to manipulate this function in a way where we're going to have to have a positive x. Notice we have negatives here, right? We're going to have to get a single positive x somehow in order to use what I am describing here. Now, notice that whatever the c value is, that's not going to affect it. That's just going to shift it up or down. It's not going to affect whether it's growing or whether it is decaying. Right? And so if b is greater than 1, the other scenario, then what's going to happen is it's going to be a growth function. Okay? So it's basically going to be looking something like this. And sometimes this b value could be in fractions, right? So like 5 over 4, for example. You've got to be careful. 5 over 4 to the power of x, that's a growth function because 5 over 4 is greater than 1. Right? That's 1.25. So just because it's a fraction, doesn't mean necessarily that it's a DK um, function, right? So it's all about what the value is. So sometimes plug that into your calculator to get the decimal to see which one of these scenarios it falls under. All right, so I wanted to mention that first. So let's, um, let's erase this and let's try to rewrite this function in that format that I just showed. So first thing I'm going to do is these are negative exponents. So I'm going to actually uh, switch these up. I'm going to write, let's not put a bracket yet. I'm going to write 2 to the power of x over 3 to the power of 3x like that. And that's going to be plus 5. I just switch these and then switch the signs of the exponents. Then we'll have 2 to the power of x over. Now this 3 to the power of 3x, I'm actually going to split this up like that. And then what is 3 to the power of 3? That is, um, sorry, I forgot the x here. That is 27 to the power of x. Okay, so 3 to the power of 3x, that's exactly the same as 27 to the power of x. You could just split up the exponents and then get your new base like that. All right, so, so far, let's save this. Actually, you know what? I'll just keep writing this up here. I think I got enough room. So 
we got 2 to the power of x over 27 to the power of x plus 5. That's the exact same as the original function. We're just rewriting it. So from here, what we can do, remember that if I have two values in a fraction to that same exponent, I can pretty much just like factor out, quote unquote, that exponent and have the fraction like that. So notice here we got an x. We have an x. So I could rewrite this as 2 over 27 to the power of x plus 5. And you have to have, in order to use this, sorry, I'm kind of going all over the place, in order to use this rule, it has to be the same exponent. So we couldn't use it up here because we had this 3x like that. The x has to be by itself, and so I had to go through this process of splitting it off and then rewriting the base as 27. And then once you have the same exponent, then you could rewrite it as one fraction to the power of that same exponent. And so notice that, well, now it's in that same format that we talked about at the beginning of the question, b to the power of x plus 5. And which of the cases is it? Well, 2 over 27, that is between. 0 and 1. And so because the base is between 0 and 1, we have a positive exponent x, right? The 5 doesn't matter, as we mentioned. We know that this model's exponential decay like that. So you got to take this, rewrite it in this kind of format, so you could show that we got a base between 0 and 1, we got a positive exponent x there, and therefore we know it's going to be exponential. DK. And that's a wrap for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you want to see more videos like this, please go to my website, allthingsmathematics.com. Over there, all of the videos are organized by chapter, by section. If you feel like you need tutoring at any point, you could also hit me up. My contact details are on the website. Enjoy your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.